Hey guys, what's up? Pete's Perfect Nerd here. Today I'm gonna be making a video on Windows. Oh my no God! No God! Please no! 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 Okay, so uh, the music's gonna be different today. Somebody asked me to stop using the song I've been using, so I'm going to be using a different song. Anyways, thanks for 100 followers on LBRY, and let's do this. So, I've been using Windows 10 for one reason, Call of Duty, and one thing I hate about Windows 10 is its UI. So I thought, hey, why don't we look into other desktops for Windows 10, like desktop environments, and uh, this is the only one I found. This is called Cairo Desktop. So I'm just going to be showing it off in this video, just why not, that's, uh, yeah. Now when you first open Kyrodoc, one of the first things you're presented with is uh, the application grabber. Now this is pretty annoying because you have to manually uh, go through all your applications and decide which ones you want in your menu. And then when you're done with that, you have to manually go through all your applications and decide which ones you want in your... And after that, you have to manually go through your applications and choose categories for each of them. And this can be a pain in the... But, and it could be even more annoying if you, like me, just forgot an application, or if you install a lot so often, uh, then this could be get quite annoying to do. So, uh, it's, it's similar to macOS, it's kind of a mix of, I'd say, GNOME 2 and macOS a little bit. Now, actually, the more I think about it, this is basically a weird version of GNOME 2 for Windows. <laughs> Up here, we got this Cairo menu, this is ripped straight out from macOS. If we go to About Cairo, this is version 0.3.6842.0, free release. Anyways, yeah, this menu, anyways, macOS has like a system menu where you can access your settings and stuff like that. This is just ripped out of macOS. Then over here we have our programs. Now, this is normally a long list, however, if we, there's some uh, other categories, so you can set these up yourself inside of the app gra grabber, and we have an install program which opens up just the control panel. Then we have our places right here, and if you click on a place, it uses it as its desktop or whatever. And what's interesting about this is this desktop can be basically used as a full file manager. It's kind of weird. Then we also have our documents. Uh, I'm going to have to black out some stuff right here because of stuff that could reveal where I live and stuff, or my school. And it's a similar way out with downloads. Now, this desktop setup is really weird, so I do like how the default desktop looks because I just like how the view of all the applications, how the, the text looks and stuff. But this can basically be used as a full file browser. We hit back, it shows us all of the directories. We hit back again, it shows us our users. Back again, that's our C drive. And in places, you can switch which folder it does other than your desktop. You can also click on choose folder right here and it will... Uh, let you choose a folder. This even shows hidden files too, which I don't think you can disable. And this navigator thing, I wish it like auto hit or something, but you can't hide this unfortunately, so yeah. Now right here we got, what is this, a dock taskbar? I don't know, really know what this is. It's got your quick launcher, but also if we open something, it displays it right here. There's also this desktop overlay button, which Basically takes all your desktop icons and brings it to the front, even if you have Windows open. So if I open this file, here we go, we now have our desktop icons over, even if I maximize this window, it still works. Now, one issue with this dock is I wish it would auto-hide maybe, because if I maximize this window, we have a bunch of unused room down here in the bottom that isn't being used. So that's why I think this should auto-hide by default. Another thing is if we click this, uh, I guess, hamburger menu and click on task view, it will give us sort of a Apple expose style, or it will crash your taskbar. Task Fix this, I guess, by auto-hiding the taskbar, but it still comes sometimes, so I mean, that's annoying. Up on this corner, we have this, which reveals your system tray. We have our volume control, which is from Windows 7. We have this thing that shows us all of our notifications right here. We got a calendar here, and we have a search thing right here. Now, uh, this does replace your start menu search, so if you normally go into the start menu to search, you do have to uh, navigate over here. That can be a little bit annoying, but eh, just some getting used to. Now let's go into Cairo settings, so uh, we do start when logging in, blah blah blah. You can change your theme, I'm gonna 
try out white. This is not going to look good. This just adds a white area for your top bar. Anyways, I'm going to switch it back to default because that white is pretty ugh. Now, menu bar, we have default programs category, which is pretty useless because if I go to the games category, for example, and I leave the menu and come back, it's still in the games category. We have a show hibernate option. Blur behind the menu bar. This is this is what that looks like if you restart. Looks pretty nice. Show menu bar on multiple monitors. So by default, it doesn't show the task bar or anything on your second monitor, which I have, but I'm not going to show because it's a lot of work and stuff. Over there. Desktop, we have uh, icon size and label position. I like how they're large by default. Looks pretty good. Taskbar, again, we have icon size, taskbar position. Now, I did mention I wish it auto hided by default. Uh, I would recommend enabling that. You can also have it overlap windows if you want for some reason. Again, you can have it show taskbar on other monitors. And if you want a more GNOME 2 like way out, you can use the full width. I'm going to set this to auto hide. And finally, we have our time date format. We have some logging info, whatever that is. For software rendering, date format right here in our default file manager. And that's Kyrodoc. Can it replace the regular Windows 10 shell? Well, as much as I hate the Windows 10 shell, unfortunately, this still feels like alpha software. And, uh, and this is pre-release after all. And uh, I'd wait until some of the bugs get more refined. And I'd wait until some of the bugs get fixed because this is pretty buggy, so I'm not going to use it as production. And as soon as I'm done editing this video, I'm going to reboot and go back to regular old Windows 10 shell. Anyways, thank you to Patreons, uh, Michelle Vantino and Sam Covet for being patrons on Patreon at the highest tier. Check out the Patreon in the link in the description, and check out my LBRY account also using the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.